That exercise is called the single serpentine. And as simplistic as it seems, a lot of motorcycle riders are not able to do that. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about why this is simple, as long as you're following the proper techniques, and why this exercise is very important as it pertains to your safety on your motorcycle. Okay, I hear it. I hear the intro coming, guys. Do it with me. Uh, 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 uh. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me, and you know this by now, or at least you should. For those of you that are here for the first time, welcome to you as well. My name's Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. And the name of this wonderful channel is Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle. And that's what this video is going to cover. This is going to help you be the boss of your motorcycle. And I'm talking about the single serpentine. I do practice sessions on this channel as well. All right, I'll put a link for it up here. I have a playlist for them. Um, and in those practice sessions, this exercise is actually exercise number five, right? And it's number five because the stuff that we do before this exercise leads up to this. So if you're unfamiliar with what exercises one through four is and the warm-up exercise that we do prior to this exercise, just go back and check out my practice session videos, okay? And it'll help you out because it's important because all the exercises that we do out here, they build on one another. So by the time we get here, we have the tools and the knowledge necessary to do this successfully. Okay, so the single serpentine, what am I doing? I'm weaving in and out of cones. Now the cones I have here are 15 feet apart. You can put them 12 feet apart, 20 feet apart, however you wanna do it, okay? My suggestion is um, start at 15 feet is, a, is plenty of space, um, but if you wanna do it a little bit wider, 18 feet, 20 feet is very wide. Right? And the purpose of this exercise is to get you comfortable not only turning the handlebars, but also leaning the motorcycle. Okay, Because we know that three things determine the radius of a turn on a motorcycle. One of them is speed. All right? And everything we do out here, we're not going fast. All right? So speed, when I say speed, I'm not saying I want you to go fast. I mean we have to pay attention to our speed. The slower you go on your motorcycle, the better you can turn the handlebars, because clearly if you go faster, what does it do to your handlebars? It straightens them out, right? That's why if you make a U-turn, and the U-turn is really wide, usually it's because you're going too fast, okay? Okay, so speed is one. Secondly, how much you turn your handlebars. Clearly, that makes sense, right? If you turn your handlebars more, the radius of the turn is gonna be smaller. And lastly, lean. The more you lean the motorcycle, the tighter the turn will be, okay? So nothing extreme here, just like we don't do anything extreme on this channel, but we have to incorporate all of these things. We have to make sure we're not going too fast. We also have to make sure we're not going too slow. We have to make sure we turn the handlebars. And now when I say turn them, I'm not talking about slightly. Turn the handlebars and incorporate lean. This is gonna make it easy for us to do this exercise, all right? That's how you do this exercise successfully. Okay, so let's go over a couple of things. First thing, do you have to be in the friction zone the whole time you're in this exercise? And the answer is no. You can go in and out of the friction zone, and the word momentum is a word I don't use a lot out here, all right, especially when we're doing some tight stuff, going at slower speeds. We wanna be in the friction zone. We want the motorcycle to be pulling us through that exercise. However, in this exercise, because we have a certain level of speed, okay, we can actually use some momentum. And by that I mean, we can go in and out of the friction zone. 
clearly momentum's not going to pull us through this whole exercise unless you have two cones set up, <laughs> right? So what I mean is um, I can be in the friction zone when I go through the first cone and I can pull a clutch in and let it give me a little bit of momentum and then go back into the friction zone. So I can go in and out of the friction zone, all right? And a lot of the stuff we're doing out here is based on feel. It's a feel thing. And part of being the boss of your motorcycle is knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And that's usually based on what you see and what you feel and the situation that's going on. So you feel like you need it, you let it out. Don't let it out too much. Everybody has to learn what their clutch lever is, where their friction zone is, and how much to be in the friction zone, okay? All right, blah, 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 blah. All right, if you guys are unfamiliar with any terms I'm using, just please go back and look at some other videos that will explain it, okay? Or if you don't wanna go in and out of the friction zone, you can stay in the friction zone throughout the whole exercise. Keep it loaded, all right? Listen to your throttle. Remember, power to the rear wheel is what keeps this motorcycle up. So that's the goal, that's what we wanna do. So whatever that, th whatever that throttle sounds like, keep it there, all right? And then you can just dip and dive the motorcycle. Keep your head and your eyes straight ahead. Don't look at the cones, all right? I, I preach that out here all the time, but I was preaching to myself, really. Uh, keep your head and your eyes straight ahead. Keep your body straight up and down and just dip and dive the motorcycle. Now, the other thing that's important is to make sure that you're not going too fast. Don't hug the cones, all right? And when I say don't hug the cones, the first cone that you go through, first cone, you shouldn't be right at the cone. Come all the way out to the side. And that way when you dip, your head and your eyes are straight ahead. Remember, as soon as you pass that cone, you're already ready for the next turn, all right? But if you start close to the cone, and a lot of people want to do that out here. They want to come out here and go through the cones like this. All right? That's not what this is. Because remember what I just said. If you're going too fast, you can't turn the handlebars. But this exercise is to get you comfortable transitioning your handlebars quickly. Quickly. Because we're not making slow turns either, right? You're not turning like this. Because if you do that, you're not going to make it. And I'm talking about if you're going at the speed you should be going. If you're going too slow... You can turn slow, but you can't lean, all right? So you understand? That's why we have to be at the proper speed to do both. Lean the motorcycle and turn the handlebars. Lean, turn, lean, turn, and make your transitions quick, 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 all right? Okay, so what circumstances will this come in handy? Well, one personally happened to me. A friend of mine rear-ended my motorcycle, right? Now, because he doesn't practice often, when he saw that I'm in front of him and I'm not moving anymore, he did what most motorcycle riders do that don't practice. And when you don't practice, you don't have any muscle memory built in to replace the instinct to just squeeze and hope for the best. Because that's what people that don't practice do when uh-oh happens. Squeeze the brakes and hope for the best. So he doesn't even have the presence of mind to swerve. Now, clearly, if you're going at a speed that's higher, it's going to decrease the amount of swerving you can do. That's why when you do a high-speed serpentine, you're turning the handlebars like this, right? That's not what we're doing here. Sometimes this might not be enough, right? If you're close to the object that you're about to hit, just doing that, and usually that's just a lean, it's not even a turn, right? That's pushing the handlebars, counter-steering. But if I'm coming up on an object and I go, uh-oh, brake, 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 emergency braking, all right? We, we don't grab at anything. We squeeze, 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 downshift, downshift, downshift. And then when I get to a speed range that I can turn the handlebars like we do here in exercise number five, single serpentine, now I can do that. I have the presence of mind to do that. It's an option. Remember, practice gives us options out there, right? And if you don't practice, your options are limited to your skill level. And if your skill level, based on you not practicing, whether you want to believe it or not, it's low. That means your options are low too. Break, hope for the best. All right. So this can definitely help you. It might even save your life. All right. The other thing is, when we're doing other exercises out here, particularly after this exercise, remember, these all build on one another, this is going to come in handy because certain things that you do out here, the figure eight, the offset double serpentine, the snowman, the, the maze, those require you to transition quick. And we've already done it here, so you know you can do it. It's just a matter of applying it right there. All right, so let me get on the bike and show you how I don't want you to do it. And this way has its place, but not in this exercise. All right, let's do it. All right, and you'll have people start like this. Look how close I am to this cone. So it's actually going to waste space for me too because in order for me to clear this cone completely, 
from this angle, I have to go further into the exercise, where if I start from the side and come in with my motorcycle coming in at this angle, right, I'm not taking up as much space. But this is what people will do. No lean, straight up, looking at every cone, and I'm doing it straight up. So that should be good, right? Like, wow. Look how, way, look how he can keep that bike up and just go through those cones. And that is good because that also takes skill too, and that's covered in the exercises prior to this one. However, like I said, we need to incorporate speed and lean. The only thing I have there is I'm straight up and down and I'm turning the handlebars slightly, okay? Speed and lean, because in the real world, if you're trying to stop from speed and then want to swerve, you're gonna to have to incorporate those two things, speed and lean. Now let's go over what it should look like and how we should be starting. All right, so if this is the first cone, and I'm talking about this cone right here, if this is the first cone I'm gonna go through, you see how far I am away from it? Again, you don't wanna start right on top of it. I'm far away from it, and when I go through, I'm gonna stay wide. Like, if you stay wide, it's gonna force you to go slow because you don't have a choice but to go slow, otherwise you're not gonna make the next one. And a lean the motorcycle, Head and eyes, I'm gonna be looking right at the camera. Dip, looking at the camera. Now let's also keep in mind, and this should go without saying if you're familiar with this channel, make sure you're covering the rear brake, all right? Cover the rear brake. Doesn't mean you have to apply pressure. You don't have to use your rear brakes in here at all, all right? However, if you find yourself going through the cones and you see you're coming up on that second cone a little too quickly, and it happens sometimes, might be going a little too fast. Gentle pressure on the rear brake momentarily to get you right back to where you wanna be, and then you can come off the rear brake and keep moving. All right, let me go through it one last time, and remember guys, listen to your throttle, but not just your throttle, make sure you're in the friction zone enough. Momentum can help you a little bit in this exercise, all right? But don't make no mistake about it, the friction zone is what's gonna be needed to pull, especially leaning the motorcycle. All right, unless you're riding a motorcycle where the idle is high enough that you don't have to worry about the throttle, um, you wanna make sure that you stay in the friction zone. All right. Dip, dip. Guys, don't baby the motorcycle. Manhandle it. Dip. 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 Head and eyes, looking right at the camera. Don't pussyfoot it in there, don't baby it. As long as you've got power going to the rear wheel, you're gonna be fine. Dip it, dive it, swing it, sway it. Head and eyes straight ahead, listen to the throttle, and you'll be fine. The number one reason that people fail at this exercise is they're going too fast. Right, again, like I told you, people just wanna go like this. It's not a ski slalom, right? That's the number one reason. The other reason is they don't feel comfortable turning the handlebars. And a lot of the times they don't feel comfortable turning the handlebars this much. That's because they're going too slow. Remember, if you're going too slow and you turn your handlebars and try to lean, the motorcycle's gonna fall. So we wanna make sure we're going at the proper speed, you know, six, seven miles per hour, eight miles per hour, that's all cool. Um, but that's also gonna depend on when you decided to make the turn into the exercise. If you turn late six, I mean, if you turn late past the first cone, eight miles per hour might not, it's not gonna make sense. You're gonna have to slow down or you might not make the next one. You understand what I'm saying? All right. The other reason people are unsuccessful in this exercise is slow transitions. They're turning the handlebars too slow and by the time they get the handlebars turned, they're already right on top of the cone in front of them. And that's why I say, and again, this is, again, it's not extreme. I'm not saying jerk. We're not, remember, we don't do anything herky-jerky. But we're just not going to do slow transitions. Turn the handlebars. Turn them. Show this motorcycle who the boss is. We're not going to pussyfoot it. Turn it. That's all that means. So if your speed is in check, you're not worried about the lean anymore because you're in the friction zone or you have enough momentum to keep you where you need to be, and you're transitioning quickly, smoothly, this exercise is a ground ball. And remember, we always wanna be mindful how much we're in the friction zone, all right? We don't wanna to give too much power because remember, the motorcycle is designed to stand up and go straight with power to the rear wheel. 
That's why we're not worried about dropping it as we lean through here because we're keeping power to the rear wheel. So if the motorcycle is designed to stand up and go straight with power and you're trying to maneuver through an exercise where you're dipping and diving the motorcycle and turning the handlebars, if you go too fast, we already talked about it, what does speed do to your handlebars, right? Straightens them out. Do me a favor, guys. I want you to practice this exercise. I want you to practice a lot of exercises, but today we're talking about the single serpentine. Practice that exercise. Remember, if you want to start with the cones wider, start with the cones wider. But if, eventually, I want you to get down to 15 feet. All right. We can even go down to 12 feet. That's motor officer specification. Um, not necessary, though. Uh, for people that want to push themselves, though, yeah. And if you want to practice the other way I told you not to do this, doing it straight up, put the clones very close to each other. Because sometimes leaning is not the answer. You have to do it straight up. And that's why I emphasize um, exercise number two so much. And that's the slow ride, right? Practice and riding slow, straight up. That's another video, guys. Um, I'll put it up here. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you out. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos. And hit that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I put out a new video. Seat time doesn't equal practice time, guys. And if you have time to ride your motorcycle, you better make time to practice on it. Your life could depend on it. Until next time.